please display the investors before one o'clock in the quadrangle by the side uh, in the mandal near the uh, on next uh, next to the auditorium. Please uh, once again, please the post people who have poster presentation today, please go and fix their posters there. I request uh, the chairman of the session. Dr. Henrik Tapso and uh, Dr. Jiri, uh, Professor Jiri Yadav, his uh, eminent scientist award lecture is going to deliver. And next, uh, Button uh, Davis and Bipin Vora will follow. I, I request uh, Button Davis and Bipin Vora also to uh, come on to the dais and uh, sit in the. Abdiriya. Abdiriya first. Yes, good morning. It's a pleasure to co-chair this uh, session. And uh, the first speaker is not foreign to any of you. You have seen him just a few minutes ago. It's Professor Yadav. Uh, Professor Yadav is a dean of the University Institute of Chemical Technology at Mumbai University. And he is the head of the Department of Chemical Engineering. He holds 25 patents and has written more than uh, 200 technical and scientific papers. He has uh, received numerous national, Indian and international awards. And he has just received another important award. He is also a member of uh, many of the important catalysis journals uh, advisory board. Uh, and has also received the uh, Innovator of the Year Award in 2006. So it gives us great pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Yada to the uh, podium and address us this morning and talk about developments of novel solid super acid uh, catalysts and their applications in industrial reactions. So please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will take precisely 30 minutes because I have to rush to Delhi, so I will not take anything more than that. Uh, it's my great pleasure to present before you uh, some of the work which we have done. And I would uh, like to pay tributes to Professor S.K. Vatacharya, the founding uh, you know, member of the Catalysis Society of India for his pioneering contributions and to the Catalysis Society of India for honoring me today. Uh, if you look at uh, sources of organic pollutants, these are multi-stage synthesis, insertion of substitutions like halogen, amino, nitro, sulfonic acid groups, and all of these affect the color and odor of the final compound. And this will involve use of hazardous inflammable solvents and mixtures of solvents, or you will use hazardous synthetic precursors. So the pollution potential increases in a complex molecule, in particular in many product industry and those who work on small scale in comparison with refineries. So if you look at the uh, problem here. chemistry, the most important principle of that is catalysis and all other principles are derivatives of this catalytic principle and that's what I personally believe. So they are all derivatives of the central theme of catalysis. Now as far as my research group goes, we have been working in multiple reactions in green chemistry in which catalysis also is a central theme. Uh, so here on one hand we have been working with more than two phases, three phase reactions. In certain cases, the phases may be, you know, nano or micro, they may be catalytic or non-catalytic as the case may be. On the other hand, we have catalytic processes including synergism with energy. It could be ultrasound or microwave or UV. Now, in the so 
and presence of impurities in the final product. And this is where novel solid acid catalysts, which do not leave the acidic centers, will be most important. Next. So if you look at this, uh, unfortunately the slides are not totally seen, but this is uh, the uh, acidic scale. If you look at the hamid acidity function, super acids are above, you know, hamid acidity function of minus 12. So this is um, minus 16 is sulfate at which is the solid super acid. You see magic acid is something like minus 20. So we have been working in this region, on this side, whatever is shown here, with all these catalysts we have been working on. Next. For example, when we started first day, and this was based on an industrial product, industrial product, where we wanted to react aniline with hydrophilone. And this is a sequential reaction, and so there could be oligomerization to, you know, uh, uh, polymerization. So this reaction has to be controlled, and this is where we started our work on sulfate zirconia, which was published. And later on, they may absorb, you know, isobutylene in paracrisol, uh, and this, this goes in the antioxidant industry. And this particular product, you know, where acylation reactions are conducted, this goes as a veterinary drug. Next. <coughs> Uh, then uh, we had production of, uh, you know, Yara Yara from um, Naftal. This unfortunately is not seen here. Then again, a reaction of cyclohexene with paracrisol to be a very important chemical. And this one, hydrogenation, is a very important perfume. So you have both O selectivity and C selectivity. And uh, again, uh, you know, uh, you can have uh, the reaction of diphenyl oxide with one of the alcoholics, C10 or C12. Next. And uh, reactions are of, uh, you know, diphenyl oxide, right, from benzyl alcohol to diphenyl ether to benzyl, um, you know, chloride. This also gives a very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, chemical. Uh, this can be converted into a perfumery chemical or it can uh, be a uh, 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 high temperature heating medium. Uh, at the same time, you may have, you know, esterification reactions like thaliganide, right? And uh, when uh, some of the work we published, you know, this uh, in this paper, uh, sulfate zirconia in my mesoporous microporous materials. Now this is uh, quoted this here as a citation class of 30 citations. Next. Um, as far as this is concerned, then we thought, why not change the acidity of these uh, solid acids? If you look at this, sulfate zirconia when treated with sulfuric acid, at 650 degree calcination temperature gives us min minus 16 uh, hamid acidity. Next. So, so what it means, if we change the nature of the sulfating agent, if we change the method of addition, uh, you change the you know, pre-calcination and post-calcination and the calcination temperature, you can introduce different sulfur content in the zirconia. Uh, at the same time, you can change the crystallinity of the phases and all this uh, can also be coupled with the nature of the strength of acidic sites. Next. So, uh, you can see that it is possible to introduce, you know, uh, sulfur content. Unfortunately, this is not clear for here. You can see here you have 5.6, uh, about 84 percent of sulfur, and you can have 4.8 percent of sulfur, or typically it is 4 percent of sulfur. And both tetragonal and monoclinic phases are there in the sulfate zirconia. So one can change the sulfur content and change the nature of phases. Next. So then uh, what we did, uh, first we did with boric acid, phosphoric acid, and uh, sulfuric acid. And you can see that the surface area is here 92, here it is little less. And at the same time, these are not uh, super acids as a comparison, uh, in, in comparison with sulfate zirconia. Next. So, um, at the same time, uh, pure um, uh, zirconia has both uh, acidic and uh, basic centers, uh, but uh, sulfate zirconia is much better uh, catalyst. And this is how we started the work. Next. And then we went on developing these uh, various uh, catalysts. And I, as I mentioned earlier, this is a mesoporous material, this is a shape sealing material, this is a redox material, this is again mesoporous material, and these are the highest super acidity reported so far in literature. And again, uric at 6 is a mosophorous material. Next. So for example, if you look at one, uh, which one which we have a US patient, then uh, suppose that this can be used for cracking, nitration, acylation, alkylation, and uh, some of these reactions are given here. For example, you know, the uh, alkylation of, you 
had Beijing with ethanol, uh, in which I know a lot of industries, petrochemical industries, refining of interest. This can, uh, using diluted uh, ethanol, one can alkyl like this, and we have shown this uh, using UDCAT1. Next. Well, uh, then also, you know, if you react uh, cresols with MDB, for example, this is a very interesting material. Uh, you can get alkylated uh, results. This is again this known in anti-oxidation <coughs> oxidation industry. Next, UDCAT2 is a safe selection catalyst, and in fact, uh, you can see sulfuric zirconia is over here, and UDCAT2 over here. We can actually close this gap very nicely. And this depends on the pre-treatment process. Uh, I won't go into the details of this. Next. And so here, by using this catalyst, uh, you, you can, uh, you know, uh, have cyclization reactions uh, like uh, uh, citral, isopylagol, and you can have nitration reactions. Next. In the case of nitration reaction particularly, using this particular catalyst, you get to, you can see that almost 35% conversion, the para to ortho ratio is the highest, 30.2 to 1. Next. In the case of this redox catalyst, we can, uh, have you know both oxidation of benzyl alcohol to benzaldehyde, hydroxylation of phenol to hydroquinone and catechol, and also you know uh, the uh, alkylation uh, in this oxidation of this particular uh, compound that is sulfur to sulfoxide. This goes as a very important drug intermediate. Next, uh, in the case of UDCAT4, again alkylation of mesitylene. You can see that this PET surface area you know, in comparison with the unfortunately that next part is not seen, but UDCAT4 gives us the uh, best uh, uh, catalytic activity. Next. So again, this is uh, done uh, with alkylation of mesitylene uh, with uh, isopropanol. Uh, there are many series and parallel reactions, so this becomes a very interesting reaction engineering problem apart from this selectivity of this particular product and you get properly, you get Diisopropyl ether as the another uh, co-reactant, and this will depend on temperature and uh, uh, you know uh, 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 W by FK not ratios. Next, so this in this particular case we had studied independently all these reactions and proposed a very interesting model which has been published in Langwood. Next, next. So in UDCAT4, uh, many other reactions were done, like you know, alkylation of toluene with the benzene chloride is a typical reaction to study the, uh, the acidic strains. Then again, uh, this uh, mesitylene, and also you can see that uh, diphenyl, uh, uh, you know, alkylation with higher pressure good enough. Next, uh, in UDCAT5 again, uh, this is published in Journal of Catalysis. Uh, we studied benzylation reactions and also you know, esterification reactions. Next. Uh, this, uh, you can see that uh, this is a very important perfumery product. So we had studied this reaction as well. Next. With UDCAT 6, we had worked on uh, TAME, uh, tertiary amyl methyl ether. And you can see that UDCAT 6 with a 95% conversion, uh, the yield of these two uh, olefins is very high. And the total yield of Tame is something like 18%. This is just a, you know, a single pass conversion. Next. So in the case of uh, combination of clays and heteropoly acids, next. Next. So you can see that the supported heteropoly acids and uh, the clays, there is a combination. And uh, clays have typically surface area K10 is something like 230 meters square gram. And uh, when you support clay, uh, the hydropoly acid, the surface area goes down substantially. But at the same time, it gives much more, uh, you know, conversion and yeast. Now, what happens ex exactly in this particular case is that hydropoly acid sit and uh, on certain junctions in the in the clay, and therefore there is a sort of selectivity, which is uh, because of uh, blocking of certain channels, which are not available for the reaction. So many. Uh, you know, secondary reactions are avoided by that, and this we had used in, uh, for instance, uh, in the case of uh, alkylation of benzene with dodecene, and we could get totally different selectivity. Next, uh, so again, this reaction uh, synthesis of MTB from tertiary butanol and methanol. This we produced the first report in Kencon in 2000 uh, in 1995, and you can see that this particular catalyst 
uh, you know, 20 percent on this at K10 gives a very high selectivity to MTDA, something like 99 percent, 71 percent conversion. Next. Again, we studied alkylation of aniline with tertiary butanol. Okay, this gives us uh, C alkylation and not N alkylation. Again, the same catalyst is very effective. You can see that this is the one. Uh, next. Then alkylation of phenol with MTBA, similar thing. You, this um, uh, supported lodic uh, uh, to phosphoric acid and play is a very good catalyst. Next. The oligonomization of dirty seed is a very important uh, reaction in uh, lubrication industry and uh, here also this particular catalyst is very good and later on what is done is this is hydrogenated to get the uh, lubricant. Next. Uh, acylation of mesetylene with acetyl chloride, once again this particular catalyst gives a, a very good, uh, this is a supported catalyst. Uh, this gives a very good risk. You can see that it gives 100% monoacylated product. Next. So this uh, particular reaction has been carried out using number of uh, you know uh, uh, processes. For example, this is uh, you know uh, uh, phenyl alcohol with methanol to get a uh, phenyl ethyl 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 ethyl, which is a perfumery which goes in the fragrance kevra. This is a very interesting reaction. Uh, again, uh, you can see that. Uh, this bisphenol uh, making from phenol and acetone. Again, this particular catalyst is a very good catalyst. Next. Similarly, uh, alkylation, I have already mentioned low diesel benzene, uh, uh, then uh, again MTB reaction. Next. And variety of other reactions uh, which are, for example, this is a very good reaction of uh, where you can uh, change the selectivity between C alkylated product and O alkylated product in reaction of phenol with cyclohexene. And on further hydrogenation, this gives a very important perfume. Next. Um, once again, uh, uh, you can see that alkylation of aniline, for example, with MTB uh, gives a, you know, uh, this paratertiary butyl aniline, or also it can give orthotertiary butyl aniline but it does not give any N-alkylated product over here. Next. Again, uh, you, can, uh, you can see acetic and hydride reaction. Uh, okay, this is a veratrol reaction. This is again a very important reaction in the perfumery industry. And in this particular case, people have used uh, uh, zeolite beta, and zeolite beta gets deactivated. However, we find that this particular catalyst does not get deactivated uh, for at least five to six react, uh, runs. So this is a better catalyst, particularly in acylation reactions, when we have ethers of this kind, they are deactivating the catalyst. Next. We also worked on ion exchange resin as catalyst, and you know, ion exchange resins are very good, and particularly they were uh, found to be very good for MTB synthesis. Unfortunately, MTB, MTB is no more produced or banned in many parts of the world. Uh, but at the same time, that was its maximum use, industrial use. Now you can see that alkylation of styrene and with uh, arthozaline. This is a very important reaction in industry. What we found that this all reaction also deactivates the annexion resin. And if you modify the surface of this resin by suitable treatment, the deactivation is stopped. And this was also uh, coming out of the industrial concentration which I was doing. Next. Uh, Again, uh, you can see that this gives a 100% atom selectivity because this ester is again a perfume. So if you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, alkylation with cyclohexene, we get very interesting reactions. Next. So like this, uh, we had done a number of reactions uh, of industrial importance and these were uh, right from esterification to alkylations to, you know, to nitrations to oligomerizations. And what we found, that the catalyst can be tailor-made depending on what you are interested in. Particularly what happens in liquid phase reactions, in, unlike the vapor phase reactions, the deactivation of the catalyst and the loss from run to run can be very significant. And that is where the engineering has to be very good. So particle size, and if you increase the particle size, for example, then you will have a uh, intra-particle diffusion limitation. So therefore, the catalyst synthesis and reuse very, is very, very tricky. Next. 
Uh, so this, uh, you know, these are some of the mathematical, uh, you know, uh, formulations and uh, design equations uh, which have been studied for variety of reactions. For example, we found in acylation reactions, these are typically illiridian type of mechanisms. Next. Uh, uh, this particular catalyst where partially substituted heteropoly acid with CCM, you can see the acidity of this catalyst is brought down. At the same time, this becomes a nanomaterial. And, uh, and when it is loaded on uh, on clay, this requires a lot of, you know, we had a lot of experiments to develop a synthetic method. We found that the uh, the surface area of this material, you know, is almost 210 meters square as gram and against 230 of clay, K10. So from hydropoly acid, about 108 to 210 is a substantial increase in surface area when we reduce the particle size and this becomes a nanomaterial. And this again gives very interesting selectivities. Next. So you can see that about this is 204 here, this is about 107. And next. So you can see that when you benzylation of anisole is done with this type of catalyst, this particular catalyst is this 20% zinc chloride supported on K10. This is not a reusable catalyst, although for single run it may be very high, you know, convergence. But this particular catalyst is reusable and this, of course this is, this is less acidic than zinc chloride and K10 but at the same time this nano material is a very good catalyst. Next. Well, that catalyst could be used in, uh, you know, a highly mixture or acylation by using benzyl chloride. Now depending on the mole ratio, temperature conditions and catalyst loading, I can produce any of these three materials which are again very important ketones in industry. They can be further subjected to hydrogenation to produce a variety of chemicals. So this gives us a way to us to make different chemicals from xylene mixtures. And we have studied these reactions independently, taking pure xylene and mixtures of xylene to, to make this type of flint. Next. Again, in uh, diisopropylation of phenol, this can be done by using isopropylene, propylene, or you know diisopropyl ether. And this final product over here is a is a drug. Okay, and this, this is a great demand. So now this particular uh, compound can also be synthesized by using this nano catalyst CCM substituted due to catalyst to phosphoric acid and K K10. Next. So. To conclude, you know, we have developed a series of new solid super acids catalysts and these are characterized and used in a number of reactions of industry relevance. What I avoided is the mathematical formulations for want of time and also going into the details of the reaction. Since uh, this is a, a sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know, overview of the work which we have been doing, I may not have given many details, but any of you who has the, any queries, I will be very happy to answer them. Uh, because uh, these are all published uh, uh, reports, so there is no problem. Next. So uh, I've been supported through large number of organizations over the years. So I have some 43 projects. I have, when I counted last, I found I have done some 43 projects with variety of uh, these agencies, some of them multiple times. Next. And of course, this is some of my past and current collaborators are seen here. I think one of them is here in this audience. And next. And uh, this is my current group, and uh, I must thank all of them for uh, uh, participating in the joy of doing something new. And I thank once again the Catalyst Society of India for honoring me with this Professor S.K. Bhattacharya, eminent scientist. Thank you very much.